Hello and welcome back to another Wild Wisdom Wellbeing guest slot. And today I'm absolutely delighted to have Melissa, Melissa Benitez with me. And we've talked about going live together for quite some time, haven't we, Melissa? So I'm oh, delighted. Yes. That... So excited. Thank you very much, Robert. <laughs> It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. So it's great to have you with us here today. And just to do a little bit of an introduction, if I may. So Melissa runs MB Holistic yeah. Botanicals yeah. and does a range of wonderful things all to support our well-being. Uh, so she's a mini and micro nurse, has a mini and micro nursery, develop, growing herbs both for cooking and for medicinal use. That's right. And uh, you're a small batch apothecary. That's and right. also you do yoga and Pilates for yes. well-being as well, for fitness and for Yes, and I'm oh, also amazing and, and goes together so beautifully. Yes, it's, it's, it's very nice to, um, as I went to agricultural school in the past, it has been a very nice journey to understand that, because initially I wanted to go to vet school, um, but now I found how versatile is it was this profession that it is really holistic and i do really like that word so mm -hmm. one thing complements each other absolutely yes. it's yes. that whole of holistic you some the people whole. spell it with the w at the beginning as if to show that the w, whole yeah. of everything yes. is encompassed That's and nice. i'm particularly interested in the work that you do around particularly around the plants yeah. Because yeah. years ago, uh, I'm fascinated by essential oils and all of that sort of thing. And I went on a workshop that was about the vibration. So energy and vibration of the plants that it's then go beautiful. into the essential oils, but also, I'm sure, into what you use and create as an apothecary. So can you tell us a little bit about you went to agricultural school and you obviously must be fascinated by plants as well. Can you tell yes. us a little bit about your love of plants and how that has brought you to being the creative that you are now? Yeah, well, initially, um, as I told you, I wanted to go initially to vet school, but it, it was not possible at the moment. So they offered me this place at the agricultural school, which is, again, as I, tell, as I told you, is very versatile. And then, However, the fascina fascination for the plants always started with my family. Um, we uh, grow the basics in South America, by the way, uh, in our gardens, and we make use of them. So I was quite familiar at some point about some plants. We like use spices, but also we know like what is good for you also, not only for cooking, to give beautiful flavor, but also good to help you to get rid of a cold, to help you with the respiratory system, to help with the immune system. So that was always there for me. Like uh, um, when I came to UK and I started to learn the language and explore a bit beyond what I had at home, it was like, wow. Ayurveda <laughs> was one of the things that really fascinated me. And then I say, okay, I've got this knowledge in agriculture. Let me just go a little bit deeper into this. Um, considering that um, I studied botanics, you know, I had some knowledge about Latin names and then um, biochemistry, a little bit of like many things that I had at uni. And then I say, oh my gosh, this is just an entire work. It is possible to support your body physically, emotionally, and spiritually through the plants. This is going back to basics. I've got goosebumps now. <laughs> <laughs> this is going back to the basics, you know? I come from a third world country where we still have indigenous populations mm -hmm. what do they use mm -hmm. of those goosebumps i love this uh plants herbs mm -hmm. 
uh, they, uh, for example, the, the, the shaman or the chief of the, of the tribe, normally uh, what they say is that they communicate with them. Mm. And then um, I will always remember this little uh, story that I had here in my back garden probably a year ago. My partner was like really feeling uh, very rough physically and emotionally, I, I would say. So I say, I'm going to do a little experiment. I asked my herbs, who wants to help? And then he told me, how did you know which ones to pick? And I said, they raised their hands, <laughs> which was like very, whoa. they don't have hands. And I said, they did, they did raise their hands. And then next day, he can you? prepare a little bit more of what you gave me yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when I understood, okay, going back to the tribes, to our indigenous, to the very basics. Okay, this is the way it works. It's a little bit been, a bit about being tuned into it. So going again, going a little bit more forwards, who we'll raise their hands and then now we know what it means in latin botanics um let's go more to the herbalism side we can prepare tinctures we can do decoctions we can do um uh infusions three different things sometimes you think one thing is the same no uh tinctures are the concentrated part of the plants we soak them in normally brandy or vodka for an entire month cycle and then it, the alcohol will extract all the properties of that plant so you'll get and that little bottle the magic of the plant yeah uh well an infusion you just put the dry or uh fresh herbs pour hot water leave it there 10 minutes now that's an infusion a decoction, which is the one I knew all my life, because that's the one that we use at home, is simply you boil them until you get that very concentrated extract, leave it rest until you can take it without burning your tongue. So those, those for me are the three basic preparations in herbs. And uh, what else can I, can I tell you, Robin? <laughs> I can't go in. <laughs> <laughs> but I love what you said there about you went and you asked yes. her. Yes. And yes. and that they raised their hands. And yeah. that's basically what I, I did on another workshop. We kind of did it on the first one I mentioned, but also on another one where we doused. And I'd never doused before. Uh -huh. I never believed that I could douse. Uh -huh. But from that workshop, I learned how and have used it many times since but we were dousing for essential oils so we had the bottles all lined up and then we would yes. use the pendulum yeah. for the the bot the contents of the bottle to raise its hand yes to say yeah. yes me and we created amazing blends doing that that were specific to each person on the workshop and i just loved the blend that yeah. my pendulum and my collection of oils said me 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 me, me. Yes. yeah yeah and it was all about the energy and the vibration yes. that you connect in with and and become in tune with and i love that about native peoples peoples of the land where yes. they have been for centuries yes. that they are so in tune that they can connect in with the plant life with the animal life with the earth of yes. where they live yes. and we could do that too we just we have got out of that practice. Yes, and then just again, just um, I, I, I have um, a powerful uh, faith in the intention, the power of the intention. You know, as Wayne Dyer said, well, and he's got a book called The Power of the Intention. You know, when you put your intentions there, it's like all the energies, they come together and you can get the answer. It's like, yeah, again, back into the energy work, but again, it's the spiritual world connected with the nature. And now let's go into the physical world, if, if we can say that. Yeah. And I think it's so much about trusting. Because I think that's what we've really got out of the, well, we've got out of the way of connecting. We've got out of the way of, of listening on that level. Yes. 
but also of trusting because so many people we have a gut instinct we and we know things without knowing how we know them but we don't we kind of second guess ourselves don't we and we don't trust yes. that knowing yes. but i love encouraging people to listen just just give it a chance and the more you uh allow it to speak yes. to you and and go with that little nudge from your gut yes. then you will find out you will see that oh i got it right all of those times and the more that it gets you get right the more you tune in it's like the the yes. old-fashioned radio where you have to turn it's the dial you're dialing side to side on the radio one yeah. day you just turn it and then it's just right there that's yeah. the way it works and then also not only into this world it's it's like many other things my holistic path started probably yeah at home with with those again but in another aspect of energetic healing started with a art called jin shinjitsu which is yes. from japan and then it also uh, it works harmonizing energy flows in the body and it's beautiful the more you practice the more you learn your intuition go they do really teach you to follow that gut and the intuition to being in a state where you can totally just let your hands move across that body and harmonize the energy that that needs to be just harmonized again yeah yes. brought back into balance quite often and I practice Reiki, so it's yeah. a very similar idea. It's all about energies and bringing them back into balance and into harmony. And I've only just recently come across Jin Jin Jitsu oh. through a colleague of mine who uses the finger holds. Yes, the finger and holds. And has taught a group of us about the yeah. finger holds for yes. the work that we do with frontline assistance for stress and trauma. Because I also do EFT, which is about tapping but it's using the same it's all i love how we've got all of these different Everything it's like so amazing isn't it yeah and if you think for me it's it's looking at the fact that there are all of these little pockets around the world of ancient native yes. uh, or cultural wisdom that yes. have been passed down through the centuries and although they're coming from you know you've got the celtic and the druidic traditions and you've got your country's native traditions you've got the japanese native traditions you also do hopi ear candling so the native american traditions and all of these different things come at it from different perspectives and different cultural lenses and yet when you drill down all the way it's like all kind of the same it's the same message dressed differently exactly and that, that's, that's the beauty of that. It's like at the end, um, many people tend to ask me, which one is the best therapy? And I say, <laughs> the one that works for you. Yes. One day you might go to the Reiki healer. You might go to the Jin Shin Jitsu practitioner. You might go to the uh, acupuncturist, to the chiropractor, and take the one that works for you. There are no bad therapies. They are just different. And everyone has the one that works for you. And it might not be the same one every time. No. Nope. So in a different situation, it might be a different therapy or at a different time, it might be a different approach. Yes. So yeah, very much. The best one is the one that works for you, the one that it resonates for you, where you are and who you are right now. Yes, yes, exactly. That's, that's again, that's something that really fascinates me too. And I can speak hours and hours about that. <laughs> And again, that's very much about listening to your intuition as to which and one calls you. To the intuition also, yeah, to, uh, listening to your body too, you mm. know. Uh, at yoga, uh, I tend to focus a lot on listening to the body. Not because it's like, oh, listen to your body and to the spiritual side. It's like understanding. Many people come to yoga for different reasons, all right. Uh, they might come because they just like it fine they might come because they are searching for um again any 
cause any um, emotional, spiritual, they can't sleep, they've got pain, they are recovering from injuries, many things. The beauty of yoga is that can be adapted and is very versatile too. And then when I go into the part of listening to your body, it's like understanding your pain. So when I say I like pain, people tend to say, I mean, <laughs> what's this crazy woman saying? How can she say that she likes pain? I said, yes, because pain is a signal. Pain is your body talking to you. Okay. And there are different types of pain. We've got different types of pain. What you say, yeah, like, yes, you get the good pain and the bad pain because the good pain, you don't want it to stop. It feels good. It's a, um, satisfying pain yeah um, <laughs> it's about the like, like, oh yes it yes. feels good yes. and it really makes you feel yes should i stop no 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 don't stop <laughs> i think it's it's a releasing pain quite often it's a isn't releasing it? pain. so i was saying to somebody the other day about say you sprain or you bruise a muscle or something and you just that. want to give it a bit of a massage and help to because if that muscle maybe if you've overdone it on the gardening or the exercise or something yeah. and the muscle is tight and you think oh that yeah. hurts but it feels so good it feels because good. it's helping to release the muscle release exactly yes so yeah that's something i really focus like where, and then when we are performing different poses i say don't look for if it's bad pain please stop yeah Okay, if it's good pain, you may want to take a breath and see if you can go yes. beyond on the pose. Yes. So that's something that, I, I, again, I just feel fascinated. Like, and then people change their, their perspective about pain, uh, which is really funny, really funny. Because pain is just all, all, only just a signal of what's going wrong. And pain will lead you to the solution of that. The pain will take you to the root of the problem. Where is your pain? What kind of pain? Is it pinching pain? Like you feel that it's pinching on the back, on the arm, on the leg? Is it irradiating pain? Is it just a good pain when you move? Is it just a bad pain? Is it excruciating pain? Like you really it feels triggered by everything. So um, yes, trying to describe, verbalize the pain helps a lot. Yeah, and that's that's not always easy, but absolutely. And I think... In my workshops, I encourage people to develop a vocabulary uh -huh. for what their body is saying. And yeah. so for me, pain or discomfort of any kind, whether that's physical, emotional, spiritual, it's information. Like you yeah. said, it's just a signal. It's just the the body doesn't have real verbal words like we're speaking now. So it's only other it's only way of communicating with us is how yeah. we feel physically emotionally spiritually so when we can tune in because i think we have a thing in the west certainly of a pain is you pain is wrong pain is bad it's like you're saying they'll look at you like you like pain you're weird because we're taught we have yes. this belief in our society that pain is wrong pain is bad yeah. pain is a, is your body making a mistake or going wrong or there's a problem so yeah. we try to eliminate it in whatever way we can and mm -hmm. sometimes i think we're just too quick to reach for the painkillers Yes. And instead of just maybe starting off, there may come a time when you yeah, need them. Not, absolutely. Starting off by just sitting and listening. Sit What's and it listen. telling me? What is telling me? Where it starts? What kind of pain do I have? Mm -hmm. then, then you you know, you know, that's like people tend to probably, it, they, they ask you a lot because they ask me a lot if I take painkillers and I say, I do. Mm -hmm. I do. The thing is, I wait for the last minutes, you know, <laughs> because I try to understand what kind of pain I have first. And then I try to do my best. And then when I get to the last instant to take it, it works pretty well. And I don't have to take it anymore. Once is enough. <laughs> so I am not abusing. Oh. And and not then developing resistance to the painkillers where you need to up the dose because the, the standard dose doesn't work anymore. Absolutely, absolutely, yes, because and we pain. know that we mm. develop that resistance to same as antibiotics. Yes, but yes. also being aware that those uh, pill formulas they're yes. chemically made, yes. which is why I love 
the more natural because yeah. I learned in that workshop that plants so when you use essential oils you, they're very good for antiseptic antibacterial antiviral anti-fungal uh, but they work more effectively than the chemical version because the plant signature is constantly changing exactly the yes. bugs can't develop a resistance as easily mm -hmm. but i'm sure it's the same with our bodies we wouldn't develop a knowledge and a tolerance in the same way plus it's natural and it, when it's natural it has that natural synergy our bodies yes. have developed they have the right receptors they so do. they can work with in synergy yeah. rather yeah. than if you take a chemical one then there's the chemically stuff that you need to get Absolutely. rid of but you just take the body takes some of it but it, then it needs to dispose of the rest because it's not working with the body and also has got secondary effects like especially mm -hmm. in the liver because the liver was going is going to work even harder to eliminate all the no all the secondary effects of that painkiller mm -hmm. So I tell people just think twice <laughs> before because there are many other methods, you know, yes. to get into it. <laughs> and I love the idea that if you work with herbals and you yes. work with somebody like yourself, you get to learn so much more rather than, oh, I have a pain, I take a painkiller and I carry yes. on. Yes. But working with somebody like yourself, you learn to listen to your body, you learn what your body's telling you, you learn from the plants themselves like you went yes. and asked and they put their yes. hands up as to which were the right plants yes. that in effect can tell you well what is that what kind of pain is that pain what, kind what of where pain? is it coming from i worked with a woman. Pain? sometimes it's like it's an inflammatory pain you, mm. do you feel pain and then you feel pressure do you feel mm. just pain is it trigger is it with the movement is it because sometimes emotional pain we know this can cause physical pain and then sometimes we need something that suits us, our soul yes. Yes. and our feelings. And then we're going to feel much better too. Yeah. And I worked with a woman who does zoo pharmacognosy with animals. So uh -huh. animal self-selection where the animal can choose from a range of essential oils or yes. herbals or whatever. But we are human beings. We're just other animals. So when you we- are. Choose, We are mammals. <laughs> yeah and when we tune in our bodies can choose yeah. too but what which remedies the animal chooses yes. can then give you an indication as to well what's behind that what's behind that? this ease discomfort that they're experiencing so exactly. working with somebody like you we humans can do that too absolutely you know this this just brings me a story um about a a lady who has a i think he's already one year old baby and then and then i i know another one who's got probably a six months old baby both of them are really struggling with the um, uh, alopecia after after the mm. uh, postpartum you know that the, the, the lot the hair the hair problem and then i told both of them this we are animals understand this from the biological point of view we are animals we are mammals right so remember that we still have got this thing about mammals we get pregnant and we have to shed hair in order to make the nest for our cubs <laughs> so if you see that from that that point of view you've been a very good mom <laughs> Yeah, and, and then, if we can learn these things that help us to develop a better relationship with our body, that it's not going wrong, it's doing actually yes. what it's designed to do. It is designed to do. So yes, it's, then both of them say, oh yes, <laughs> because when they looked at their babies, yes, this is my cup actually, it's my cup. And I say, yes, you're doing a great job. And I want to keep good. that cub warm and comfortable <laughs> and cozy. Yes, and yes. I'm giving up my very self to do that. Yeah, so they immediately stopped complaining about them losing hair because they had a baby. But it was like I hadn't heard them anymore complain about their hair. They uh, They've been just making some research. I told them that there is a research about 3% jojoba oil in, no no yes jojoba oil in um 
peppermint mint essential oil in a 3% dilution. So three milliliters of peppermint oil in a hundred mils of jojoba oil. So, and then you massage your scalp with this. And then the study says that it was much better for the hair loss after. Wow. So again, let's go back to the essential oil. Let's go back to basics. Let's, and then I, I, I found it such a nice story about essential oils and nature together. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I love the fact that it's um, natural products. Yes. That it's what you use as well is cruelty free. Yes. And yes. if you're using essential oils and stuff, it's vegan as well, vegan friendly. It's vegan, it's vegan so, friendly. So you're not harming anything and you're working with, working with yes. your body, working with nature, working with the wisdom of the plant. Yes. And also yes. it smells wonderful. And smells wonderful. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So what else can we ask in life? <laughs> We've got everything. As you were saying, you uh, grew up in South America and then you moved to the UK. Yes. And that was quite a, a big difference. There must big have been difference. a huge difference in the plants that you were familiar with back yes. when you were growing up compared to the plants Definitely. and the, the climate and everything. Climate, everything. I had to throw everything I thought I knew, put it <laughs> in the bin and then get everything new back in here with certain things that might work but I had to learn everything I haven't stopped learning and I don't think I will stop learning I don't That's think we're ever meant to no <laughs> no absolutely not absolutely not but I'm really enjoying the, the journey I'm fascinated every day the more I learn the more curious I get now mm. I am a very curious person so I get more and more curious every day. And I'm grateful for that. And curious I think, is something yeah, that the more we learn, the more we realize there is to learn. And yes. when you've learned one little piece of the jigsaw puzzle, you get curious as to know, well, which one does this fit with? And where does that go? And what does that bit look like when you put it together? Yes, yes, definitely. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a wonderful journey. And uh, since I started to work more and more with herbs, um and and knew more more uh i'm gonna say new for me okay because um i didn't know what i knew that there was a plant called lavender and uh, it's an universal smell okay you <laughs> another another funny story i i did work in horticulture some some time and then uh the only lavender i knew it was a um a floor cleaner back home called Miss Doling. Okay, <laughs> and it's a favorite for everyone, Mistoline lavender. Okay, but actually, I never, never knew what was the lavender plant, but only in pictures. So, of course, I came to work in horticulture at this nursery, and then I overwatered the lavenders or underwater the lavenders. And I was like, oh my gosh, how do I explain my boss? The only lavender I knew, it was from the mistoline, from the floor cleaner. I, had, I did never cultivate a lavender plant. So um, yeah, that was one of the things that I, I, I learned about, about this magical world. Mm. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, I'm fascinated about lavenders, and I've got several types of lavenders now, <laughs> and I don't and kill them. <laughs> that was one of the oils that we focused on on the workshop that I went to, and they taught us about the different chemotypes, depending on where it's... It, obviously, there are different uh, mm -hmm. species, or whatever you call them, within this the yes. family lavender, yeah. and then depending on where it's grown and the conditions, so the soil, the climate, yes. the altitude, everything. Yeah. It can change, and then mm -hmm. um, and the different types of lavender. For example, I the the one that uh, it's um, uh, call it universal, the more versatile is Lavandula angustifolia. But you get the French lavender, you get the other types of uh, Lavandula dentata, which smells absolutely adorable, by the way. You get you get also the 
very pretty flowers but not so much smell so mm -hmm. or you get different type colors of flowers i've got white lavender here oh my god i love it <laughs> yeah so you get it decorative medicinal uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and before we came live you were saying that we're actually just entering the season now for medicinal yeah. plants entering the season so i'm so excited about the mints I've got them. I'm excited about lavenders, but I'm even more excited about the mints. Probably the ones that those are the ones that I find fascinated too. Not only because they taste nice, but the range of flower, the, the flavors that you can mm. get from many types of mints. So I've got like strawberry mint, Moroccan mint, banana mint, chocolate mint. Um, there is a new one that is like the um, black currant mint black peppermint you get spearmint and um oh they are really nice so you uh the basil mint is really nice too so pineapple mint apple mint pineapple mint i do have apple mint and i do apple mint too <laughs> and they're yeah. quite different aren't they the the yeah. hairy thick yeah, leaf of the green, apple green, very the... green and shiny leaves they are yeah. so more like um my curly ones um what the other ones that are more prostrate for example the banana uh, penny tea. royal i used to have penny royal and the smell yeah. was so strong it's so strong isn't it i love it too yes yes it's a it's a it's a world it's a world of means it is um, it is we have yeah. it growing wild here in near the stream mm -hmm. and in the summer the, when it's warm and you get yes. the volatile oils coming off yes. the smell is just <gasps> amazing it's just amazing and let's talk about an infusion of mint oh my god that's mm. so digestive mm. it helps you to calm your nervous system yeah it helps with digestive system digestive problems yeah you can chew it yeah, yeah great breath freshener yes great freshener yes <laughs> it's it's just fascinating yes so i'm really looking forward for the mints you know just to get ready so i can take them out the um, uh chamomiles and mm. also the um lembivinas oh they yes very good sellers mm. yes lembivina oh. is fascinated to me i actually made one of my tinctures it's uh, is with lemon, lemon bivina. It's lemon balm, lemon bivina, and chamomile. Those three, they are really, really calming. Very good for the nervous mm. system to help you to aid in sleep too. Yeah, mm. this is really nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and also, I believe you run workshops. I do. Yes. Um. This. Um. Uh, since January, I have been starting to plan my yoga workshops. Um, the next one is going to be on March the 6th and it's all about energy self-healing. So I'm going to be teaching the principles of Jin Shin Jitsu and some yoga and I can't wait. So I'm so excited about it because as I told you at the beginning, Jin Shin Jitsu is one of the therapies I've been studying and practicing the longest. So I'm very excited to start sharing what I know. And starting with the finger holds, main central flow. Those are the two basics of Jin Shin Jitsu. And a very, very easy yoga. So you can just loosen up your body, do a little bit of stretching, and then get tuned into your body to listen to the pulses in your own hands. So yeah, I still got some spaces left. So um, yeah, I need to promote that. But yeah, thank you very much for asking. <laughs> Is that uh, online? Or face yeah, to face? It's in my, yeah, it's in my, it's no, it's face to face and it's going to be in Bishton Village Hall and it's going to last for one hour and a half. So it's, it's kind of a short workshop, but it's going to be very um, uh, focusing to the practice. Yes, there is going to be a little bit of theory so people can know what we are talking about, but I like to go into the practice, to the experience, and then what, what they can do after they finish it, because they can do it at home too. Yeah, so it's 9.30 in the morning till 11. Sounds like a great way to start the day. Oh yes, it is. And it's like, it's, it's not too short, not too long, and then you still got the rest of the day to chill out. 
So in terms of your small batch apothecary work, yes. do you sell the tinctures and... Well, I mainly started to sell is um, body butters, bath bombs, and yes, I do sell the tinctures. Um, uh, I, I have developed two at the moment. If people need something extra, yes, I can make a preparation for you. Um, basically, I've got two, as I told you. One is the one with uh, lemon balm, lemon bivina, and chamomile, and it's just simply a calming tincture. And the other one is revitalized, which has got oat straw and ginkgo leaves, which is like, I say to people, this is like um, a red bowl in a little bottle with no secondary effects. So it really lifts you up. So yeah, yeah. So I've got those two for selling. Um, I'm preparing now a, a, a batch because they sold. Oh, I was surprised. <laughs> well, happily surprised. But yeah. Um, I want to do a little workshop about basics of the herbs. I would be very interested, interested to help people to know that they can have something in their garden who can, that can help them. And even if people don't have a garden, a lot of the herbs and things, certainly mint, lemon balm, they're very, very easy to grow. You could grow them on a window box, oh, yeah. in a pot. Yes, and in pots. Oh, yes. That's another workshop, how to grow them in pots. <laughs> Yeah, and and what are what are good plants to grow in pots? That you know you could That's do a true. workshop on that so that well, people. Can I just grow everything in pots because I can. I need to sell it. So most of the plants they can be easily grown in pots. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is to learn how to, especially with the mints, maybe divide them, and then if you want to put it in your raised bed, how to keep their individual flavors. Because if you put them all, if you say that I oh, you want a raised bed with um, def different types of mints, eventually they are going to model in the in the bottom and they are going to be a tutti frutti. You don't want a tutti frutti. You, <laughs> you don't. Individuality in the plants. So you will need to, plant, if, if I can say this, plant the pot inside yes. the raised bed. Yes. And then... When the winter is coming, take the pot out, divide it, give it to friends, and then you just continue to grow your mints. Brilliant. Brilliant tip yeah. there. Yeah. So uh, please do post those different uh, workshops and your tinctures and anything that you're offering. Feel free to post them on Wild Wisdom Wellbeing because oh, it would be great you. for people having watched our live today uh, oh. and heard all about what you offer it'd be great for them to be able to access those easily yeah sure i will for sure thank you very much robin for such a beautiful conversation well it's been brilliant i'm so glad that we finally got here and that yeah. you were able to join us and to share all of this wonderful wisdom so if you've been watching and you'd like to know more uh melissa tell us where do we find you what's your website Oh, yes. Um, my website is, is on building right now, my new website. But you can find me on Facebook as MB, uh, M for Mother, B for Bravo, Holistic, or MB Holistic hyphen Botanicals. So MB Holistic is more for the yoga and the complementary therapies. And Botanicals is more for the, um, the nursery and the apothecary. So brilliant. Yes, and nice. when your website is finished, feel free to share that on the group as well. I will for sure. I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Thank you so much again, Melissa. Thank you very much, Robin. Uh, and thank you for watching. If you've got any questions for myself or for Melissa, do feel free to stick them in the comments below this video and stick in a hashtag replay if you're watching the replay. And tune in again in another nearly two weeks when I'll have another guest and I'll be posting about that very shortly. So have a great weekend. Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>